everyone. Welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we're gonna have a special episode in that April and I are going to kick off manufacturing products direct to consumers. Where in the past Dragonfly Engineering typically has been a consulting and a, a prototyping and fabrication company uh, to do business to business interactions with other companies here in Silicon Valley. Uh, but we, uh, April and I, do want to branch out and try the uh, direct-to-consumer product development and building. So, to do that, I am resurrecting this old mold, which uh, was built at Dragonfly Engineering for a customer. And that customer, uh, or this product, basically uh, concluded like maybe five years ago. And uh, recently, the, the customer released the mold to me as scrap. So, you know, so basically they said, as long as I remove any of the features or their intellectual property and their logo off of this mold, then I could um, use it to mold our own products to sell direct to consumers. Uh, April and I are planning on using Amazon.com, you know, as uh, one of the main platforms that every, seems like seemingly everyone on earth has to use to sell uh, through e-commerce. Uh, and we also have a Shopify website, which currently just shows kind of a mediocre selection of mugs and t-shirts. And to be honest, we don't really sell too many or any of that. But, uh, so in this episode, I'm going to show you the process of how I basically use the EDM machine mostly to, to burn off or machine off uh, using electric discharge machining. Uh, the features that were considered proprietary to my old customer and also uh, to burn in the Dragonfly Engineering logo over the old customer's logo. But the product that this mold makes, as you can see, it's pretty interesting, is going to be this, this tray. <laughs> Let me zoom in. And this tray uh, currently I use in the shop itself for holding end mills. After you buy a new end mill and uh, you know you, you use it in your mill and then you wind up uh, losing the original container or something. This is a good way to organize your your still good end mills in a um, in a nice tray that uh, holds them all. These trays can also be used for things like uh, pencils or uh, markers or storing little tiny objects like beads or even model paint. If you custom mix some some model paint or something, you can store it in these. Uh, and one of these 24 wells that are molded into this, this tray. Here I've got it loaded with end mills because this is how I usually use them. I've got eight or nine of these next door in the machine shop that just holds my end mills without them getting banged around or rolling around in a cart or anything like that. So this is the first product that Dragonfly Engineering is gonna sell direct to customers. So we can get into the details of this mold and I'll zoom you in and probably use my cell phone and stuff to discuss it more. All right, so that's a view of the product. It's a 24 chamber tray that's a deep, deep access. So it goes all the way down there. And again, like I mentioned, it can be used for pencils or paintbrushes or crafting stuff or uh, the main target for this first release is going to be in mill storage. So that's, that's it in its use case. So the mold itself is pretty interesting in that we've got this, this hard, uh, hardened steel, I think this is A2 steel, that's been heat treated to a Rockwell C of about 55. And, uh, you know, cause this is a deep drawed part. So basically all of these, all these little chambers you see uh, through this trans, semi-transparent part are these, these veins on the side. And it is hard, so you can hear it actually makes a nice sound. <laughs> and then here's another one, the different sound. And then, yeah, so they all have their own little resonance. Here we go. And then in the middle are, are more posts, which basically define the uh, structures underneath. And these, these kind of inverse diamond posts interleave with these, with these um, cores on the A side of the mold. And uh, that thus makes the, this shape. Now, when I was injection molding polypropylene into this mold, which comes in from uh, uh, this sprue right here. Uh, oh, and there's another part I'll show you here in a second. 
But a lot of these, some of these inner features were actually bending over and, and uh, this does need to be a watertight part, uh, mostly for like storing custom model paint and stuff. Because I'm, I'm planning on molding little rubber corks that fit on top of this, uh, of each one of these chambers when we're not using it for end mill storage. But anyway, uh, these, these posts would actually flex from basically just the hydraulic force and the friction or, or the, you know, the drag of the plastic squirting into this, into this complicated mold cavity. Uh, some of these would bend over and actually touch or, or not quite touch one of the core pins on the A side, but it would get close enough where there'd be a little void. Uh, and then I'd have a, basically a leak in one of these chambers, which is no good. So I wound up having to get tungsten carbide rods and, and basically um, drilling out these, this A2 hardened steel and putting these tungsten carbide rods to help prevent these inner diamond shaped posts from bending. Because <laughs> you can see they, they go in pretty deep. This is probably about a little over two inches, maybe two and a quarter inches or like 60 millimeters for the metric folks. And uh, yeah, and then over here, We've got the main core pins themselves, which create these, uh, you know, these pockets in the top. And in the bottom, I've decided that uh, I'm going to put these little, these little diamond shapes. And these are useful if um, someone does want to basically make little tiny uh, filter funnels out of these, then they can take a needle and they can poke out the bottom, which is almost breaking through with these, with these pins on the ends of the, uh, of the, of the posts here. So uh, the default is that these, these trays uh, will be watertight, but if you do want, it, want them to be draining, then you can poke out the hole. <laughs> um, now, an interesting thing about these core pins is that these are steel, and if you mold tall, skinny, high aspect ratio core pins like this, then they, they hold a lot of heat. They don't give off they don't radiate away the heat naturally uh, as if, if this was like a, an aluminum mold or something. So what we had to wind up doing is adding this whole copper network of uh, cooling. And so the cooling water comes into this copper line. It goes to the left and right side of the mold. And then it's actually plumbed into the side of the mold with little O-rings to a, a matrix of copper pipes in the back side of this mold underneath this this block and each one of these core pins has a copper tube that comes up basically right to the almost to the top dead center of, of each of these these steel core pins and coolant is actually pumped coaxially up and then it basically just flows back down uh, into the drain side and there's basically a, a watertight hardened steel plate that separates the hot and the cold side so each one of these pins or core pins has a copper tube like this coming up to the middle, flowing back and then collecting in a common drain area, which is defined by these copper tubes, which go down and just dump out of the mold, which is a kind of a goofy way of doing it. But anyway, at the time, this is what we came up with. And actually, uh, my wife, April, did a lot of the soldering of these, these copper fittings and stuff. And then down below, you can see this this other copper structure, which basically takes up uh, the, uh, all the drains that you see. They all kind of fit into this, into this interesting double bell shaped drain and this dumps back into the, uh, into the water uh, reservoir. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting process. Sometimes it does overflow, so it can be problematic. Now another part of this mold is the stripper plate, which is this almost two inch thick, you know, plate of steel. And these bearings slide onto these, uh, to these long guide pins. And the retention force when this part is fully molded onto this array of core pins is very high. So what we have to do is use these die springs and we stick these die springs into the mold cavity itself or into the A side of the mold in these, these spring pockets. And then we string this uh, stripper plate 
onto the mold itself. And these springs, whenever the mold opens, are gonna push this, the uh, part, which is barely retained in this, in this cavity because of, of this, uh, this flange on the, on the, on the backside. Uh, the, the part is actually pushed off of all of these core pins with this flange in the draft angle in this, uh, in this stripper plate, which defines the wall, the outside wall of the part itself. So let's uh, string this, this stripper plate onto our A side of the mold, now that I put the die springs back in. So now we'll head over to the machine shop where the EDM machine is, and this is a RAM EDM machine. And I'm gonna show you, probably through just a video montage, the fabrication of the copper electrode that was used to burn off the tips of our pins that create the, the new wells that have no features in the bottom. Again, because I needed to get rid of some IP from an old customer. So check out the copper machining. And then following that will be the EDM milling process uh, on the EDM machine, which basically electric spark erodes away the steel in a bath of very fine viscosity EDM oil. So enjoy.
I think this may be a wrap for this week. Uh, we finished the first copper electrode and EDM process. Next episode, which will probably be like uh, this Saturday, we are going to show the machining of the logo in another copper electrode and then burn in the logo over the previous logo on this mold. Uh, and also, uh, in a, probably about two weeks, maybe one and a half weeks from now, these trays will be up for sale on the Dragonfly Engineering website. So take a look. Uh, the, there'll be a link in the description below, or the website is also listed at the end of this video. And, and pick up your own end mill organizer or pencil organizer or whatever organizer. All right, well, thanks for watching Dragonfly Engineering. Talk to you guys in a few days. Bye-bye.